what if I told you that seagulls sometimes hunt whales? Well, you probably wouldn't believe me, would you? But it's true. Welcome back to the Majestic Machine Kasuros YouTube channel, everybody. Glad to have you. This is actually a fairly impromptu YouTube video. It is not one that I had long been planning to make. But then I was scripting a TikTok video about an incredible trip to Argentina that I recently got back from, and I realized that I basically had no time whatsoever in such a short video format to actually talk about the whales that I saw. Basically, all I had time for was to show video footage of said whales. So in this video, I'm going to show you all of that same footage and share some pretty amazing information about these graceful, curious, and enormous creatures. Let's start with a TikTok that I filmed while I was in Argentina, which does kind of jump around quite a lot in terms of subject matter, but it was filmed at the spot where I spent most of my whale observing time, so it'll give you a good first impression of exactly where I was and what I was doing. Warning, this will not be a high quality TikTok. We got bouncy camera work, it might be windy later, but here we go. But anyway, I'm currently walking along the peninsula of Valdez in Argentina, where I've been for the last week with the primary objective of observing southern right whales, which has been just amazing. But there's also some really interesting geological slash paleontological history of this place, so let's talk about that. About 10 million years ago, all of this was also underwater, and it's really not that hard to tell. This, for example, is all covered in fossil shells. They are everywhere. One of the other students also found this, a sand dollar, which most people would never take a second thought about, but I'm gonna make you. Unless, of course, you scroll away now, but that's no fun. Just like shells, sand dollars are the remains of once living organisms. So here's a question for you. Of the three organisms, humans, sand dollars, and clams, which two do you think are more closely related? I'll give you a second to think and give your answer. Here's some sea lions for you. You're welcome. Well, the answer is actually sand dollars and us, but why? Well, it turns out that splitting animals into vertebrates and invertebrates is kind of a made-up distinction. There's plenty of invertebrates that are more closely related to vertebrates than to other invertebrates. A different way to split all the animals into two giant groups that's actually more accurate to biological relatedness would be based off of which body hole develops first, mouth or anus. In general, in one of these giant groups, the hole that eventually becomes the mouth develops first. So these animals are called protostomes, which means first mouth. In the other group, the butthole develops first, so these animals are called deuterostomes, which means second mouth. Humans, for example, are butthole first animals. And so are sand dollars. And that's because, and you can tell this much better when they're alive and look something more like this, sand dollars are a funky kind of sea urchin. And the fancy scientific name for the sea urchin group is echinoids, which are part of a much larger group of animals, including sea stars, which are called echinoderms, all of which are deuterostomes, just like humans and other vertebrates. So yes, you're actually even more closely related to sea stars than sea stars are to clams or snails, because clams and snails? Protostomes. Anyway, I don't actually really have an interesting way to wrap all this up, but it doesn't matter because remember how I told you at the beginning of the video? Warning, this will not be a high quality TikTok. We got bouncy camera work, it might be windy. So great, but why on earth was I in Argentina? Well, I went with a group of other students from the University of Utah as part of a program focused on both ecology and the environment, as well as human systems and our relationship to and very complicated connections with nature. And one piece of that was spending a week in Puerto Piramides observing southern right whales, named so because they used to be the right whales to hunt. And that's because they're slow, they will come to the surface in curiosity, and importantly, unlike most other whales, they float when they're dead, which makes it very easy to collect their bodies after they've been hunted. Largely thanks to overhunting, both the northern Atlantic and the northern Pacific right whales are very much endangered, but luckily, the southern right whales seem to be doing all right. Their Wikipedia page literally has their conservation status listed as least concern, which, oh, you love to see it. Anyway, let's now watch the first section from my most recent TikTok video so that you can see some of the videos I took from this observation point, and then I will jut in real quickly to tell you about the seagulls. So I recently just got back from a trip to Argentina where I saw literally hundreds of whales, some way closer than I ever could have possibly imagined. And having mentioned that in a couple of my recent videos, some of y'all wanted to see the whales too, so okay, I did get some pretty incredible footage. Just as a brief introduction, I went with a group of ecology and humanities students from my university with the primary objective of observing southern right whales. The place where I saw the most whales was here in Puerto Piramides in the peninsula of Valdez because a ton of mother whales like to bring their newborn baby calves to this mostly enclosed safe bay. And if you'd like to learn some interesting stuff about these whales and the surprising and unique predator of them that's only in Peninsula Valdez, I'll be releasing a YouTube video about them the same day that this video comes out. But anyway, here's a couple of videos that I took through a spotting scope on the very last day that I was there. Oh yeah. Tail slap. Tail slap. Give me one more breach, please. Yeah. Yes. 
Peninsula Valdez is actually the largest breeding area for southern right whales in the winter, and it makes sense why. It's shallow, which means that they're protected from an attack from below, and the bay means that they're protected on all sides. And that means the only thing they have to worry about is an attack from above. Sometime in the late 90s, likely after waste from fish processing plants allowed kelp gull populations to soar, an overpopulation of these gulls led them to seek out new food sources elsewhere, and some of them figured out that when whales come to the surface to breathe, you can land on top of them on their backs and peck at them literally eating them alive. And unfortunately, this practice has caught on in the Peninsula of Aldez. I saw it happen all the time, every single day I was there. It's very common now. And unsurprisingly, it's very bad for the whales. Since this started happening, we've observed them spending a lot more of their time actively avoiding the kelp gulls, which means they're wasting energy, they're spending less stress-free time at the surface breathing, and they're just wasting time that they could be using for nursing. And of course, some of the wounds on their backs are significant as well. All around, not a good situation for the whales, so we just hope that other goals in other places don't also learn this behavior. Luckily, for now, it's just the Peninsula Valdez. Wild. Okay, on a happier note, let's play the next section of my TikTok where I show the closest I ever got to one of these whales. Also, just for fun, we took a couple of boat tours out into the bay to get a little bit closer to the whales, and on our very first trip, we got incredibly lucky. There was a very young, curious female whale that swam right up to our boat. I couldn't have been more than 15 feet away, and I'm honestly kind of shocked that I didn't cry. But anyway, here's a few videos of that experience. If you don't speak any Spanish, the tour guide there at the end was saying, it's not exactly clear the question of who's watching who. The tour guide also literally had to say at one point when this young whale first approached us, if you have the chance to touch the whale, please don't. Like, what? I had no idea that was going to be an issue. Okay. You can also see very clearly in that video these funny structures on the whale's face, which are not barnacles like humpbacks have. Instead, they are ridges of bumpy elevated skin where small crustaceans called cyamids, or whale lice, live. These patterns on their faces are called callosities, and what's really interesting about these callosity patterns is that they're like fingerprints. Each whale's pattern is unique. So in theory, if you went back to this bay year after year for like decades and took a ton of photos of the whale's heads, you could build an enormous database of photos that you could search through and find specific individuals that return to the same spot every three years when they have a new calf. And that's exactly what a couple of biologists from the University of Utah have done. It's pretty cool. All right, let's finish then with the last section of my latest TikTok, which is about the very last place in Patagonia that I visited. All right, I'll leave you now with a video from the very last place that I went as a part of this program, a small remote conservation site in La Esperanza, where we didn't need any human technology to get close to the whales, because who needs a boat when you can just stand on the beach and the whales are right offshore? And although I'm not a religious person, in fact, I'd call myself an atheist, I don't think religion should have a monopoly on the term sacred. Gary Snyder gives this definition that I love, for example. Sacred is that which helps take us, not only human beings, out of our little selves and into the whole mountains and rivers mandala universe. And if we're using that definition, well then, just for a day, or even really just half a day, this was a sacred place for me. So I share this video now with the hopes that perhaps you might be able to share in my awe, wonder, and peace, even just for 20 seconds. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got to learn a little bit about these amazing creatures in addition to getting to share in my wonder of just watching them. If this is the sort of content that you like, definitely check out my TikTok at Mashikasaurus. By the time this video comes out, we've probably hit 400,000 followers, which blows my mind. Um, so as per usual, thank you so much for the support. It means a lot. I hope to see you back here again sometime soon for another video. Peace out.